Well, folks, welcome back to the show. This is the Upper Tier Podcast. If you could subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification button, drop a like on the video, share the content, and help us to continue to grow the community. It is WrestleMania week. We did our preview last night and all. Check that out, Pro Wrestling Weekly. Great fun with the community in there last night on that show, giving our predictions for WrestleMania and everything in between in terms of WrestleMania week and what's going on. Plenty of content in there, plenty of content coming your way. It is WrestleMania week. But this is our review, Dark Side of the Ring Season 5, Episode 5, I think it is, the Harley Race episode. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, did we get a Dark Side of the Ring episode. Feels like the season is only beginning with this one. Harley Race, a man I've been a big fan of for a long, long time now. Watched his career right back in the, the early stages of my fandom of pro wrestling and stuff like that. But this was always going to be an interesting one. Wasn't quite sure what we were going to get. We've heard all the crazy stories and everything about him and how hard a man he was and his protection of the business and all that kind of stuff and how it came full circle to give away some of the secrets of the business, how people frowned upon that at the time that Harley Race would have been the last person they would have thought of. But it goes back in the start, you know, the opening quote was, he was no gimmick, he was Harley Race, the baddest man on God's green earth. Opens up with Mick Foley, who was quite inspired by him and stuff like that, who got to work with him, along with various other people. Uh, Trevor Murdoch is involved in this as well. Trevor was a trainee of Harley's school um, and got to spend a lot of time with Harley exchanging stories and stuff like that. So he was kind of able to validate some of the stuff that came up. Next, we get introduced to Ivana, his wife, who was a wife of 24 years. And she tells us, of course, that he left home at 14. He was tossed out basically where the family couldn't afford him anymore. Just imagine that, tossing your 14 year old child out the door because you can't afford him anymore and stuff like that. Tough times back then, tough times, but called for tough people of course, you know. Um, you know, he got a job on a farm then, he was working on the farm for the, uh, the Sabisco. Uh, the Sabisco brothers who uh, he realised they were uh, professional wrestlers and stuff like that. That intrigued him into getting involved in the business. So he used to work on the farm and in turn they would they would train him. Basically stretching and torturing him and stuff like that. And you know we've heard the old stories about these old pro wrestling skills. And you know how protective they were of the business. And you really had to be a hard guy who could really withstand the torture of the business before you would be accepted into it and this is what jim Cornette uh sort of uh, alluded to this that he was like you know he was absolutely tortured there in his training and stuff like that and all and uh we've heard these stories we've heard of Stu Hart talking about the dungeon and how he used to stretch guys as well this real old school way of training guys and stuff um so it must have been tough on him you know Cornette described it as legalised torture. Good Lord. Next we get Eddie Sharkey and says he has been in the business a million years at this stage, which is pretty true. And Harley was one of his best friends. He says they got their start in wrestling in the circus scene, getting paid 3 to $4 per match, which is probably, not too sure, but was probably reasonable money back then, I'd say. Um, thinking about the timing of all this and all, but uh, and it would come out okay and stuff like that. But he was talking about how they would go in and there'd be a circus act and they'd have a plant and they'd pick that plant to go up against the guy at the time. And sometimes Harley was the plant and sometimes he was the guy, and that's how it worked out. And you know, he started wrestling at 14 as well, you know, so very tender age. But back then, I think by the time you got to 14, you were perceived as being nearly an adult and a man and stuff. You had to go out and find your way. At 17, he married Vivian Jones, and she was pregnant with their first child, and this, I can't, like, just this whole car crash thing that happened, and he lost his wife and his unborn child, and I can't imagine what would go through your mind when that happens, and they were going to amputate Harley's leg, and they didn't amputate his leg, they went a different way, um, and he survived, and he kept the leg. Um, but just imagine, just imagine the trauma, the mental trauma of going through that, of losing your wife and your unborn child in a car crash it must have been absolutely horrific and uh, then he teams up with larry henning and they each had the bleach blonde hair to get the heat with the fans ivana didn't like the harley was a villain she didn't like him being a heel she much preferred him being a baby face but i think with harley it was always going to be a heel wasn't it when you think about it you know um trevor said that trevor get get the story that we've heard a million times before about harley being in a being in a bar and a guy got physical with a girl and he confronted the guy 
um, and the guy had a friend there and that guy opened up stabbed him a few times and stuff like that and all that uh, and then Harley found out where this guy lived and he pulled up he rolled up onto his house with a pistol to take things into his own hands basically and um, apparently Harley told Trevor that it wasn't a pistol it was a machine gun <laughs> there you go uh, and that proved to Trevor that it wasn't a lie so very very interesting the way things are unfolding here um, uh, Larry Henning broke his leg, so Trevor, or so Harley gets a chance at a singles run, gains the attention of the NWA. Remember the NWA Council and the territories and all back then. Um, and Dory Funk Jr. was the champion at the time. Senior was the, the the booker and the the promoter in the NWA at the time, and they wanted Harley to come in. They didn't want to go with a babyface babyface situation, so they brought Harley in as a heel, and Harley became the NWA champion. Um. And from there, then, they pushed Harley so hard and stuff like that. And this is where Jim Cornette and guys talk about when you're the champion in the old territory system, the onus was on you. You were traveling around everywhere. You were wanted everywhere. You became a household name. You didn't get much time at home. And then he's going to slip into the, the story of the same routine that we've seen time and time and time again with these wrestlers. On the road so much, detached from family life. And then when they go back home, it just doesn't feel right that they're not on the road and they search for more work, they're back on the road and all that. And then the whole domestic situation just falls apart. And I think Yvonne alluded to the fact that like it doesn't matter how many houses you buy or boats or Porsches or jewellery or clothes or any of that kind of stuff, that doesn't replace having your man at home, having your husband at home, having your father at home with the kids and stuff like that, you know. Um, to the point then they had turned around and it was going to be uh, this uh, Starcade. Uh, the flair for the gold and the, what it was was Harley was going to defend the belt and drop the belt to Ric Flair who was going to pick up the belt but Vince McMahon Jr who was on this this push now in the WWF was going to come into all these territories and take them over which would have been the birth of what we know today this WWE global organisation basically and um, that was the, the final sort of start of it and stuff like that and Vince offered Hardy Race 250 grand now at that stage that was big bucks as well remember 250 grand to jump to the WWF and not do the show and Harley of course being the consummate professional that he was in terms of professional wrestling turned down the money and Vince kind of ran at him and dived at him to attack him and Hardy got him in a front face lock and stuff like that and choked him out and he could have actually if he wanted the, the story is he could have easily broke Vince's neck there and then some people might look at that and think hmm you know <laughs> now what we know today and all that kind of stuff and all so give your thoughts on that if you want in the comments you know um <laughs> vince's uh vince's next uh move was he moved into kansas city of course and this was harley's territory harley was truly the king of kansas in terms of that territory and vince moved in of course with hulk hogan as the champion and the story goes that harley showed up he wanted to shoot hulk hogan he had a pistol on him went to the building all that kind of stuff lit the lit the ring on fire couldn't find hogan hogan was nowhere to be seen um and eventually vince took harley on harley joined wwf obviously got a really good payday for offering up the territory and also got a job in wwf at the time was brought in a difficult one to push a kind of a difficult fit wrestling at that time was going through a huge transition so brawly guys and trunks wasn't necessarily the way to go Vince was beginning at the start of this whole gimmick thing and stuff like that and had these kind of characters and all that kind of thing. So Harley was put as the king of wrestling. He was the king, king of the ring, as they say. Which for me was always a weird fit. I remember watching it back in the day as a kid and stuff like that. King Harley race, of course, you know. Um, but certainly he was um, he was a, a heck of a brawler and he was like... Uh, it was tough, you know. Saturday night's main event, you had Hulk Hogan versus Harley Race. It was a fantastic match. The Harley dived onto a table. And this was before they gimmicked them and the bar didn't break and instead blew out Harley's intestines through his, through his belly button, through his creating a hole. Uh, for which he kind of struggled with and didn't really recover from in any time. So Harley, he ended up getting 300 stitches on the inside, dropped from 300 pounds down to 200 pounds. And this was beginning at the end of his kind of in-ring career and stuff like that. Um, then he went home, went home for a while, and he was drinking and all that kind of stuff. And we know there was a history there of drinking, probably painkillers as well and stuff like that and all. And, you know, we, we were... 
you know, we were kind of made aware of the, you know, getting pulled in back in Kansas and stuff like that. And ever since the the car accident, he um he never abided by the speed limits and all that kind of stuff. We hear he was pulled in a number of times, and if the policeman knew him, it was kind of slid away. If he didn't know him, he might have got charged with and all. And a number of times he got into scuffles and trouble with the law down there in Canvas. Um, he got intoxicated one night. Went out. They were living down in. Uh, they had a. A summer home and they had a uh, boat on the lake and he went out and took the boat out on the lake and there was a boat already out on the lake with people on it the lights were switched off he came around the corner of the lake and he shot straight into that boat massive accident causing uh, injury to a number of people including himself but was able to get people to the side of the lake as opposed to drowning and all that kind of stuff um, and that ended up in a big lawsuit and stuff like that where he he ended up in a lawsuit, something like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The original lawsuit was like ten million, and he kind of he went down a path of literally losing everything that he had. Um, the ex-wife called Harley's psychiatrist, and she advised her to leave immediately, pack a case, get out of town, get divorced, all that kind of stuff. And so she divorced him. It was a restraining order. It was a nasty divorce, and of course, this prelude that there was she speaks about there was domestic violence and stuff like that. Harley's son is on. He's not so convinced about it. I get the feel there's a lot of tension there between the two of them um, in relation to how the story went or whether it was true or not. We can only believe the characters that are on the screen and who was talking about it. She also says that Harley says he was a kind-hearted person, but he was not a family man. As we hear, a key line a lot of times with these professional wrestlers because they're traveling three, 320 days a year. How can you be a family man if you're not going to be there and all that kind of stuff? Um, we just spoke about the lawsuit Harley returns to WCW as a manager he was still a major name so they were using him for Vader they used him for Mick Foley um, he's, his run in WCW then ends and then he does this expose this wrestling secrets revealed which absolutely shocked everyone where he was sort of they kind of darkened the mountain stuff like that and changed his voice slightly, but everyone knew it was Hardy Race and it got out. And people couldn't believe it. You hear Gerald Briscoe talking about how they couldn't believe the Harley Race, the great Harley Race, was the guy who would give up the secrets of professional wrestling in this expose. And it was kind of like a, a follow on to Beyond the Mac kind of thing, you know, that kind of way. It was kind of like giving up these secrets. Uh, he opened up a wrestling school. And in 2004, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. This was the first kind of Hall of Fame back where it was a big event and stuff like that. So he was inducted then, had the wrestling school, all that kind of stuff. 2019, Harley Race passes away after health battles, including one against lung cancer. He was 76 when he passed away. Um, so let us know your thoughts let us know your thoughts on the episode a tough episode to watch as well I know most people back in the day and even now would be big fans of Harley Race and you can see you can see a lot of um, shades of Harley Race in the way some of these guys work in terms of you know that old school way of thinking the working of a body and all that and that kind of rugged kind of way of wrestling and stuff um, but yeah let us know your thoughts on the episode obviously a tough one let us know let us know has it changed your mind on Harley Race now that you know about the accidents and the drinking and the domestic abuse and all that kind of stuff, has that changed your view on them? Um, or are you still are you still all in on Harley Race? Um, but yeah, another another um, probably the toughest episode of this season to review. So I'd imagine we're going to start getting into it now a lot more because the first few episodes were kind of a gentle landing, let's say, as they say. Um, but yeah, this one Harley Race. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification button, drop a like on the video, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Cheers.